In this video, you will learn how to assemble your VSD 5000 boat lift. This will complement other detailed information provided in Flo's written assembly instructions and owner's manual. Before getting started, it is important to have a dock system layout. Our designer dock tool is ideal to help you lay out and visualize the dock system prior to assembly and installation. We recommend that you talk the nuts to the specification, not the bolts. Place parts and fasteners in their designated locations prior to each step. Before tightening the fasteners, measure from corner to corner, then the distance between the corner posts above the frame beam and at the top of the corner posts, to ensure that your lift is square. Make sure your lift is level and square before installing the V-brace or ball screw tube. Assemble the cradle clamps with the given nuts and bolts before installing it onto the cradle beam. Use a marker to denote fasteners, which have been tightened to the specified torque. In order to do the assembly, you will need the following tools. The blocking material may be anything, 10 to 15 inches in height. We recommend using 5 gallon buckets, jack stands, blocks, or sawhorses. You will need two for each side, or four in total. The blocking material is used to support the lift during the assembly in steps one and two. Warning! Do not use an impact wrench to adjust the easy level legs. Applying too much force to the legs will damage the mechanism. Do not adjust any dock leg more than two inches at one time. Alternate between each dock leg until your lift is level. If you do not adhere to these recommendations, it may result in poor lift performance and damage to lift components. Do not use a corded drill to adjust the dock legs. Use of a corded drill may cause electrocution. Set the 121-inch lift beams onto your blocking material. On corner A, attach the inner frame clamp and the outer sheave frame clamp to the beam using a 1 half by 3 inch bolt, 2 half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. In the lower hole, attach the clamps, using a 1 half by 4 inch bolt, and a half inch washer. Hand tighten the nuts only. Do not torque until all the nuts and bolts have been installed. Next, attach the inner frame clamp, and the outer frame sheath clamp to each other, using two 1 half by 1 and 3 quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner B, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using two one half by three inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two one half by one and three quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner C, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using two one half by three inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two one half by one and three quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner D, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using a one half by three inch bolt, two half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. In the lower hole, attach the clamps using a one half by four inch bolt and a half inch washer. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two one half by one and three quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Now, attach the 96-inch side frame beams. On corner B, use two 1 half by 3 and a half inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Make sure that the bolt heads are facing towards the inside of the lift, as shown. Repeat this same process on corners C and D. On corner A, Use two one half by three and a half inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Make sure that the bolt heads are facing towards the inside of the lift, as shown. The frame beams must be in this orientation before continuing. 
Next, locate the corner posts. Slide the corner posts into their corresponding corner. The carriage bolt heads must face the inside of the lift. And the nuts must face the outside of the lift. The water depth stickers and drive bolts must face out on the front and rear of the lift. Make sure to butt the clamp up to the corner post tabs. Attach the sand pads to the bottom of the posts using a half inch by three and three quarters inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque to 20 foot pounds. Use the drive bolts in your drill to adjust the height of the legs. Check to make sure the frame is square before any bolts are torqued. The frame beam clamps must be tightened in the proper sequence. If the bolts are not tightened in the correct sequence, the frame beam clamps will be seated poorly. This may result in poor lift performance and damage to lift components. Start with corner D. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolt to 60 foot-pounds. The lower bolt is not torqued until later. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Next, move to corner A. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolt to 60 foot-pounds. The lower bolt is not torqued until later. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Then, move to corner C. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 60 foot-pounds. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Now, move to corner B. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 60 foot-pounds. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Find the center line on the frame between corner C and D. Next, find the center line of the V-brace clamp. Match the center line of the clamp with the center line on the frame. Ensure that the left side of the V-brace clamp is on the inside of the lift. Attach the two V-braces to the clamps using a 3/8 by 3-inch bolt and a 3/8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Next, slide the upper V-brace bracket onto corner post C. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3/8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3/8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Slide the upper, outer V-brace bracket onto corner post D. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3/8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3/8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Ensure that the corner posts are square. Now you may torque the bolts. First, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Now, torque the upper bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Two people are required for this next step. On corner post B, loosen the nut and lift the leg. Do not allow the leg to fall inside the corner post. Attach the ball screw clamp using two 3 8 by 4 and a half inch bolts and two 3 8 inch nylock nuts. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Next, slide the ball screw tube into the hole on the post. Make sure the holes are aligned in the clamp and bearing block. Insert a 3 8 by 7 inch bolt and 3 8 inch nut into the upper hole to ensure the holes are aligned. Hand tighten only. On the other side of the ball screw tube, pull the cable out before placing it in between the corner posts. Now, slide the ball screw tube down and align it with the holes in the bracket on corner post A. When inserting the bolts, make sure to pull the cable down. Insert two 3 8 by 4 and a half inch bolts and two 3 8 inch nylock nuts to hold the tube in place. Next, insert a 3 8 by 5 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. 
The cable must run above the bolt. If it is not, please fix this now. Now you make torque the bolts. Start on corner B. Torque the highlighted bolt to 35 foot-pounds. Torque the highlighted bolts to 40 foot-pounds. On corner A, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Torque the highlighted bolt to 5 foot-pounds maximum. Do not over-tighten. Insert a 1 half by 1 and 3 quarters inch bolt into the cradle clamp. Twist the cradle clamp and bolt onto the cable. Do not twist the cable. Place the side cradle, beam A, so that it aligns with corner posts A and B. Note, the upward leveling cable is placed on the motor side. And the downward leveling cable is placed on the opposite side. Place the side cradle, beam B, so that it aligns with corner posts C and D. On beam A, take the end cradle and slide two cradle clamps onto the beam. Then, slide a half-inch nut into each cradle clamp. Thread a half-inch by one and a half-inch bolt into the clamp and nut, just until the bolt catches the nut. Now, place the cradle, U-clamp, on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle, U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On the other side of the end cradle, beam A. Slide one cradle clamp onto the beam followed by the cradle lift clamp. Then, slide a half-inch nut into each cradle clamp. Thread a half-inch by one and a half-inch bolt into the clamp and nut, just until the bolt catches the nut. Now, place the cradle, U-clamp, on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle, U-clamp. Make sure that the end of the cradle clamp is flush with the edge of the end cradle. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On beam B, take the end cradle and slide two cradle clamps onto the beam. Then, slide a half-inch nut into each cradle clamp. Thread a half-inch by one and a half-inch bolt into the clamp and nut just until the bolt catches the nut. Now, place the cradle U-clamp on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle U-clamp. Repeat on the other side. Slide the side cradle beams into the cradle lift clamps. Repeat on the other side. Make sure that there is a quarter inch gap between the UHMW strip and all of the corner posts. On beam B, the cradle clamp should be the same distance from the end on both sides. Make sure that the surface of the cradle beams is flush with the surface of the U-clamp. Now torque the bolts on the cradle clamps to 45 foot-pounds. Note, torque the lifting clamp to 50 foot-pounds, while positioned on the end of the front cradle beam. Remove the lifting clamp and allow it to unwind to a neutral position. Then reinstall the clamp by turning it in the nearest direction to properly position the clamp back onto the end of the cradle beam. Torque the highlighted bolt to 45 foot-pounds. Next, you will need to locate the front cable shiv and the cable holder. Wrap the cable around the cable shiv, followed by the cable holder, to hold the cable in place. Now, slide on a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and half inch nut, to hold everything in place. Make sure that the cable holder is installed at 120 degrees, as shown. Next, take the cable end and secure it in place, with a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and half inch nut. Torque the nuts to 45 foot-pounds. Install the other cable end on the corner post D using a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and half inch nut. Torque to 45 foot pounds. Repeat this on corner post C. Torque to 45 foot pounds. On corner post A, attach the cable end to the lift frame using a 1 half by 3 quarters inch bolt, 2 half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. From step 1, the bolt and one of the washers should already be installed. Torque to 60 foot-pounds. Repeat this same process on corner post D. On corner post B, attach the cable end using a 1 half by 7 inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque the bolt the 45 foot-pounds. 
Check to make sure that the gaps between the cradle beam and frame are not extreme. On corner posts B and C, there should be approximately 1 to 3 inch gap. On corner posts A and D, there should be approximately 0 to 2 inch gap. Now, you may attach the drive train. Please, note that the drive train is sold separately. Before attaching the drive unit to the lift frame, apply a generous amount of anti-seize, from the small packet included, to the inside of the rigid coupler, and the motor shaft. The rigid coupler on the drive train, and the ball screw, mate together. Attach the drive train to the lift, using 4, 3 8 by 1 and a half inch bolts, 8, 3 8 inch flat washers, and 4, 3 8 inch nylock nuts. Make sure that the bolt threads clear the nylock in the nut, before using the torque wrench. Torque to 10 foot-pounds. Insert a 1 half by 3 quarters inch bolt, through the top hole, so that the bolt head is inside the lift. If your lift has a canopy, discard the 1 half by 3 quarters inch bolt, that came with the ASC box. Remove the 1 half by 1 and a quarter inch bolt, holding the canopy insert. Attach the ASC box to the bolt, and install the nut. If you have a canopy, torque to 60 foot-pounds. If you do not have a canopy, tighten the nut and bolt until they are snug. Then go a half turn past that. Next, stick the dual lock on the corner post, and press firmly together. If you plan to use an AC power source, the drivetrain can now be connected to the power source. Warning! It is very important that this connection be made, in accordance with state, and local regulations. The power connection to the flow 120 volt AC VSD drive must be made by a qualified, licensed electrical contractor using the appropriate 20 amp GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupter protection device. This unit must be located at the lead end of the power supply to prevent any unprotected current from coming in contact with water. Failure to do so may result in severe injury or possible death. Improper setup will void the warranty. If you plan to use a DC power source, attach the 24 volt VSD drive battery trays to the ball screw tube using four 3 8 by five and a half inch bolts and four 3 8 inch nylock nuts. The offset side of the tray should go on the outside of the lift to provide clearance for the inside of the lift. Tighten to remove any play in the bolts, and bend the tabs slightly around the tube. Torque to 5 foot-pounds maximum. Place the caps on the corner posts. Insert a 12-volt battery into each battery box. Plug the wired remote into the plug on the ASC, labeled wired remote. Plug the limit switch wire into the ASC plug, labeled limit switch. Secure all wires using the supplied Velcro. If a canopy is to be installed on the lift, the wired remote can be strung along a canopy hoop and hung next to the dock. Make sure to secure the remote to the canopy hoop with Velcro. For the 24 volt system, there will be two separate batteries. On the first battery box, connect the red lead to the positive battery terminal and the white battery interconnect to the negative terminal as shown. On the second battery box, connect the black lead to the negative terminal, and the other end, of the white battery interconnect, the end with the circuit breaker, to the positive terminal, as shown. Attach the battery voltmeter, included with the battery box, to the batteries, according to the instructions. Now, place the covers on the battery boxes, and strap them through the slots on the battery tray. See the VSD drive instructions for more information. Refer to your assembly guide and owner's manual for instructions on test running your lift. Your boat lift is now assembled. Thank you for choosing Flow. Please consult your local dealer if you need additional assistance.